Hi, my name is Björn Feutel. I am the CEO of DSO Datenschutz Osnabrück, where I work as a cybersecurity consultant and also as an external data protection officer for some companies. And I'm also doing penetration tests. I took the CH, the Certified Ethical Hacker version 10, um, last year. And I also did the practical exam. And I think I did quite well. And um, yep, I turned up in the all time ethical hacking leaderboard on the EC Council website. And I also have the Certified Network Defender, Certified Network Defense Architect and of course the CPAT. Also last year I took the OSCP and I was um, reading about the challenge EC Council put up uh, where they challenged that their CPAT was much harder than the OSCP and we should give it a try. And I've also heard that Many people failed this exam and this intrigued me. So yes, I, then I took the challenge. Well, I had a lot of knowledge um, regarding or from the OCP and that helped a lot. It, it did really. Um, there, but there are also, were also some other subjects which I were not so familiar with. So um, I, besides doing the iLabs, and looking at the presentations. I did some research on the internet about these topics and got some basic understanding of this. I'm already working as a penetration tester and also took the OSCP and um, though if you don't have any practical experience um, you may want to practice a lot before taking the exam. Um, the hardest part for me was actually doing binary analysis uh, for 64-bit systems and especially the part where you have to debug code on the Linux because I, I was not so familiar with these tools so I had to do some foundational work there. So first, there's a complete wide range of topics. More topics covered than the other exams I read about or have experience with. Um, they also get in touch with the um, IoT and OT uh, section. Um, you have some, um, not only have a flat network there or isolated systems, you also have um, uh, a multi-layered network with security measures in place, meaning firewalls, access control lists and uh, endpoint protection software. This was also a challenge for me. And yeah, what I really liked a lot was the um, exam structure because um, you, can, you can choose whether you, you choose uh, you take one 24 hour exam or two 12 hour sessions. I went for the 12 hour sessions um, because this is more realistic um, because in reality you also wouldn't do a 24 hour penetration test at, a, at your customer in a real world engagement. Um, as the CPAT is a practical exam, I also practiced a lot in the iLabs. There are about 100 iLabs. I think and yeah you have to practice a lot so this was um, was a good solution to get familiar with the tools and um, if you feel familiar enough to take the exam you can also go for the practice range um, this is an exam like environment where you can see where you are standing in regards of your preparation this gives you a very good idea on what to expect in the exam. When I first get to a customer doing a penetration test, I'm setting up multiple notebooks with my tools and vulnerability scanners, etc. And I also, the first tool I'm opening is Wireshark. Because Wireshark gives you also a good idea about the uh, chatty 
hosts you have on a, uh, on a Windows network, Windows it's most likely. Um, and also it helps you um, debug things when you have, uh, when you are expecting some, some return, uh, you can debug uh, why you are not getting a response from a host whether it be in uh, scanning or with a reverse shell, etc. And what I also like, I'm doing penetration testing first with, uh, with a vulnerability scanner. Um, I'm using Nessus there, uh, but I'm also doing manual penetration testing uh, with MMAP. And um, I also use um, some scripts I have collected over some years now. Um, I would recommend you do the same if you take the exam, get a good arsenal of tools ready. And yeah, for exploitation, um, I'm using Metasploit. So these are the main tools uh, which are also, which I use on a day-to-day -day basis and which are also covered in the exam. Well, I'm, I'm a penetration tester for some years now. Um, I'm self-employed. So um, yeah, it's, an, it's another uh, feather in my head um, from the certifications I already own but um, yeah I, I, I learned a lot especially um, regarding um, operational technology integrated into the IT environment which I face on a day-to-day -day basis with the penetration tests um, yeah and um, and also I was one of the first to globally to achieve this certification. And as I'm an instructor for several ATCs in Germany, this also benefited me, of course, because I'm now ready to teach others doing the CPAT. Um, I only have experience with the OCP, to be honest. So um, what the, the main difference is that in the exam you don't have isolated hosts where you have to get root access or system access. You have a whole network comprised of more than 15 hosts and these are interconnected. So um, you will have to find a way into the first uh, service and then go from there. Also pivoting into other networks, um, doing some uh, letter removement there. Um, um, so yeah, this, it's, this is the, the, the main feature there. Um, also, uh, I think the um, usage of tools is not so much restricted in the CPAN as it is with others. You can use whichever tools you want. Uh, they don't care. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a big, big bonus. And um, yeah, on most machines there are multiple ways to get in, and not simply one. So um, yeah, also there you are completely free. Of course, there are rabbit holes, um, but um, yeah, you, you will find some some more ways to get into these machines. So the best advice is to have a good methodology. You need to have a systematic approach to identify your hosts, uh, identify the services, see which services are vulnerable and which are probably rabbit holes. Um, and you also need to know when to get on to the next target or the next service. So uh, I think this is crucial. Um, and when entering the exam environment, you won't do that by using the iLabs. You will have to set up your own virtual machine, either Kali Linux or Parrot Linux, and access the um, exam environment and to challenge the practice range environment via OpenVPN. So I would advise you to already collect some tools, some scripts um, that you have ready when you do the exam. And when you are taking the exam, I would also recommend that you take good notes because after the exam you will be doing a pen testing report and um, you won't 
don't want to find yourself uh, in the situation uh, where you only have half an hour left to go and you have to collect several screenshots from all your steps um, you have taken to um, compromise the machine. So I would recommend that you would do that on while, while you're taking the exam. Um, and lastly, I would say don't make any assumptions about the hosts you are facing there and how they should be configured. Um, as in real life, administrators do very stupid things. And this is also something you should expect in the exam environment. So I, that's, I, I think that's it. So if you are ready to take the exam, I wish you all luck. And yep, hopefully you will be the next CPENT in the near future. Thank you very much.